the other day, we're, we're sitting on the couch. Now, you got to realize, my kids all make fun of me being the, 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 the host of The Grid. They are constantly, they refer to me in my own home as Scott Kelby, the host of The Grid. And they go around and go, oh my gosh, The Grid's my favorite TV show. I hear this all the time. So the other day, Sarah looks over at me, and I have no context, but she goes, can I please be on The Grid? I'm like, yeah, you, you want to come on this week? She's like, please. The reason why is because my son's been on the grid and he was teasing her that she's never been on the grid. So here she is. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, of course. So let me ask you a question. Just, just a couple of questions to get us going here. So you're in high school. How much like the Disney show High School Musical is your real school? Um, Percentage wise. About 100% like it. Everybody's breaking out into song all the time, actually. I knew it. I, I knew it. I mean, people it. get up on the tables, they're dancing. It's crazy. All right. Eric, how much was your high school like High School Musical? 0.0%. <laughs> Mine too. Zero. Absolutely zero. But a lot of dancing, a lot of singing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. <laughs> no, it's not. Anyway, so Sarah's just going to hang out with us on the grid today. We're very happy to have her with us today. Um, today is how to edit your photo day. So we've asked people to submit photos, and I'm just going to take you through them. Uh, I said, send me your raw, unedited photos, which most people did, which is good. There you go. We're going to look at those. And I'm going to have Eric do one. We have a Milky Way shot coming up a little later. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to pass it over to Eric. Like, Milky Way. You're the Milky Way expert. It goes over to Eric. So we're going to do that. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have Sarah do a few uh, on her iPhone. <laughs> no, <I'm just laughs> I, I, I want to take that, that shot of her looking over at me like that as like, a meme. What? And just, put it, just put it out there on Twitter. Um, hey, by the way, speaking of Twitter, if you're watching, I just tweeted that we're going to be live. So if you want to retweet that, that would be awesome of you. Um, but... Uh, before we get into this, Mr. Kuna shot a, a really interesting launch oh, last yeah. week. He got some great photos. In fact, one of them I saw today was retweeted by Cannon. Yeah. Cannon was retweeting one of his shots today. But uh, before we get into this, uh, Mr. K, let's see what you got. All right, let me start off. They're gonna, they're gonna be like, "Where's your screen?" All right, my screen's up, I, or they should see it now. So yeah, so last week we had a, a launch. Uh, we have four private citizens. Uh, launch from Cape Canaveral so this was the first time like actual like private citizens went through training they weren't uh, like official like NASA or um, any kind of government agency astronaut so this was and they actually didn't go to the edge of space <laughs> they went all the way around space and they went orbited all the way to space yeah orbited they actually orbited the higher than any astronaut since the Apollo missions Really? So, yeah. Wow. So, like, you know, everybody else went to the edge of space, and SpaceX went, we're going to go way out there. So, so Jeff Bezos, yeah, it's edge like, of space, yeah. and then come Branson, right back down? Yeah, right back down, right back down. Right back down. So, yeah, so anyways, it was really cool. This was actually, this is the morning of the launch, so that's the rocket out on the pad. Uh, so I'll just kind of walk you through. Uh, so I'm covering this for a news agency, so um, just giving them interesting pictures that they were going to use in articles. and um, Nice reflection. I like yeah, that. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, and then that was the sunrise that we had uh, that day. Um, then you know, kind of just telling the story, you know, of uh, framing up the shot. This is actually, this is the launch. This is a long exposure of the launch, uh, first 20 seconds of the launch. So that has 10 stops ND on it to cut down the light coming from the rocket. And it's still shot at ISO 100 at F11. Um, and then there's, uh, that's from the pad. So this is actually, my camera's about 1,300 feet away from the rocket. Man, I am not there. Good, that's a good shot. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, I'm not there. That's something I set up earlier in the day. I actually set that up about so, nine o'clock so in the morning. So this is a remote camera. Yes, this is a remote camera. It's being triggered by sound. And here's another frame from that same camera. Ooh, I like that one even better. That's the one that actually Canon yeah, uh, that's retweeted. The one, yeah. Oh, and, I love and that shot. Interesting about that, because a lot of people ask, that's actually from a uh, Canon 7D. So about 11 years, like 11 years old. Wow. Uh, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff you can get out of these older cameras as long as you, you know get. What I love about this shot, I love the color. I love the tones because you've got these like dark browns, and then you've got these lighter tones, Thank and you. then it goes to orange, and then it makes its way to kind of yellowish, and then it goes to 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 what we think is white until you see the rocket the the and then, it, yeah. then it's like pure white and then it goes to black i mean dude there's just such a great range of tones in this image 
Thanks, thanks. I, I can't take I take, I take a that. lot of credit for that because you know those are things that uh, learned from like Rami taught me a lot about the color toning and, and stuff like that. So that same principle was then applied here. Uh, ah. Tracy Sweeney was another one. Um, oh, T Sweeney. So here's like a shot just to show like. Um, no, oh, we lost it. This is actually that same camera after the rockets left. So you can see how dark the pad is compared to what it is there. So that's, that's the difference is it's just uh, the, the contrast. Uh, there's another remote shot um, nice. by the pad. Um, nice, nice, Eric. Then uh, I actually put out an infrared camera. So this was an infrared camera uh, shooting the rocket lifting off. Oh, uh, I like on the back. that. So it's just the infrared. And then this was actually the infrared light from the rocket lighting up the pad and the clouds around the pad after it left. Um, another one of it lifting off. Really like that reflection that I was getting, uh, it going through the clouds. Uh, then it was getting lit up by the, so the sun had set just an hour before. So the sun was lighting up the cloud and the rocket. Uh, even though we were in darkness or in uh, astronomical twilight, or actually nautical twilight. Um, so you started seeing the, the gases being lit up uh, from the second stage and the first stage, and then this picture came out of it, which that is oh, the cool. uh, first, that's the second stage of the rocket up in the atmosphere. Um, the gases are being kind of like sheared across there, and then what happens is you get this like kind of Whoa. nebulous looking thing, right? And you can see there's, there's like the thing. So that darker, that sunset, that's the actual sunset in space in orbit. Then you've got that blue light, which is blue hour or twilight. And that's all lighting up the exhaust that's coming from that first and second stage boosters. Right, what did you shoot this with? That was with a 1DX. A 1DX uh, with what lens? Uh, that was a 100-400 at f8. Wow. So, man, yeah. that's an amazing at shot. 400. That's that's at 400. That's at 400. That's a crazy, crazy shot. Yeah. Thanks. Um, How did you and get then, that? How did you get that text in your lens? Oh, I, it's a very interesting filter that you have to put on the. <laughs> so uh, here's like as it gets higher up, you can actually see that is the second or that's the first stage booster boosting back with these what are cold gas thrusters. So it's orienting itself to land Actually, back on the drone Eric, ship. Eric, I think what you're seeing there is a sonogram. Yeah, it kind of does look like that. But yeah, that is the booster boosting back. And then the other one is the actual astronauts flying off into space. So All right, really well, cool, cool stuff. Yeah. All yeah. right. Hey, we're going we're gonna to give some shout outs and we're going we're gonna to put Sarah to work here. <laughs> we're going to say hello to these folks around the world. And uh, so Sarah, take it away. Hey. Um, hi, Glenn from Calgary. Um, hello from Jack in Princeton, New Jersey. Hey, um, Jack. <laughs> hi, JC from North Dakota. Uh, Hal Khan, hi from Santa Fe. Jeff S. from North Carolina. Eric Arnold from Ohio. John Dukes, hello, everyone. Uh, hi from Rainy Mountain Airy. Met I don't know that. Um, Airy, that's uh, Maryland. I'm horrible Maryland. At Maryland? Yeah, it's Maryland. Horrible at geography. Okay, yeah, Maryland. Okay. <laughs> well, you're going to have a fun time with the next one. Oh, Just great. Just do the first name. <laughs> okay. Hi, Violetta from Lithuania. And hi, Teresa from Summerfield, Florida. Local. Carlos from Madrid, Spain. Uh, Louis from Maryland. And hello. I'll help, I'll help you with Marcus's. It's Braunschweig, <laughs> Braunschweig. Germany. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hi, Marcus. Marcus is, is, a, is a, a frequent viewer, so we're, 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 all, we're, we're all very familiar with him. Well, thank you. Well done. You're welcome. Good job. All right. <laughs> We got some giveaways today. So Sarah, what are we giving away? Oh. What are the prizes for today's wow. show? I'll hold them up while They're you mention They're so exciting. Them. Today's prizes are Platypod multi-accessory kit and 50% off anything in the store. A DXO Nick 4 collection. Yes. On wow. one, no noise wow. AI or... No, that's right. Okay, we're cool. And we're a Lightroom 7-point system book. Right here. By yours truly, yeah. Scott Kelby, the host of The Grid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Welcome to my world. That's it right there. I hear it all day long, every day. All my kids. I consider her one of my kids. All my kids. So anyway, uh, let's get to work. Let's take a look at some. Again, we asked people to turn in some images. I'm going to go ahead and start it off with this one. First off, it's a really good image. So, and it's, and it's in a place I love. Uh, so I'm getting to do both. I'm getting to edit an image that, that is from a place I love, but it's also a very good photo. Looks like somebody got up Ooh, early. Yeah. 
which is great, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, beautiful St. Mark's Square in Venice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is always packed and packed and packed with people. So they got up really early. Uh, but I love I love the whole their their composition and the leading lines and everything that they got. So what do we not love? The vignetting in the corners. Look at the dark edges in the corners, right? And uh, I don't know what lens they use, but this is very common. It's a lens issue. So the first thing that I would do is go to the lens corrections panel. Now, if you're using Lightroom for the cloud, <coughs> they call it the optics panel, but it does the same thing. And the first thing you want to do to get rid of these darkening in the corners is turn on enable profile corrections. Let's do that. Oh, crud. So there is a, a giant database <laughs> inside of Lightroom that is all of the lenses, right? But for whatever reason, even though, look, Lightroom knows it was taken with a 10 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. So it, it knows, right, that, uh, that it, the exact lens it was taken, for some reason it can't find the exact matching profile. However, so I'll bet, uh, oh, I bet, I, okay, here we go. I got this, I got, ready? Look at the XF data. It was shot at ISO 200. I'll bet you, because a lot of older Nikons, their ISO is 200, and it's 10 millimeter. I'll bet it's the 10 to 22 Nikon lens. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that this was shot with a Nikon camera. So go over here to make, and if you choose the model, it'll usually find the yeah, profile. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It'll, it'll, you, and they'll get pretty close. Yep, let's go even to Nikon. Even if you select even the wrong one, like one version off, it yeah, might even... even yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not that sticky. All right, here, let's hear Let's hit Nikon, watch. Okay, it didn't fully get it, but it's better. Watch, look, look. Now, it chose a Nikon Coolpix. Dude, there's no way that's a Nikon Coolpix. Let's see if we can find in this list... I mean, I guess it's possible. The 10 to 20, the 10, here's a 10 to 30. Ooh, that's better, look. Are you watching? Ms. Kuhn is not watching this. Oh, I'm doing sorry. some brilliant stuff over here. Guy's looking off in oh, sorry. rocket pictures. All right, I'm gonna go with that one. I'm gonna go with the 10 to 30. That's that's not probably the lens. I'm guessing it's the 10 to 22. But yeah, I'm, but that's the whole thing is you can, you can get close to what you yeah. were and it, a lot of times it'll correct it. Yeah, I just want to, real quick, there's a lot of lenses, right? I just want to see if oh, that 10, so many. 10 to 22 is floating in here somewhere. All right, we're going to go with what we got. Because it's, look, it got most of it done, right? And yeah, look that at the really distortion. Yeah, that really helps straighten out the building. The straighten distortion. out the building. Look at the distortion on the edges, which yeah. is typical when you use a high, uh, wide-angle lens. All right, now, there is a little slider here for vignetting, so you can kind of fine-tune it. But it's not going away. Now, I could easily get rid of this in Photoshop. Just go over to Photoshop, use Content Aware Fill. Oh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's just go over there and fix it real quick. But I, I honestly, in real life, I would probably just crop it. I would probably crop it in a Yeah, I mean, bit. it's so minuscule. But I mean, here's you, what you do. Just select that corner. You could even corner. select it and do Content Aware Fill or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing, Content Aware Fill. Yeah. Let me go to Content Aware Fill. Oh, I don't need the whole big window. Hang on. I, I, I overdid it. I don't need content aware fill. I, I just, uh, I guess I'm going to get it. I don't want any of that. I just want, don't stop. accept it. No. I, I just want fill. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, you only go to the big window when you have an issue. Yeah. And I don't, I don't have an issue. Okay. There we go. So you can so, see it got rid of that. Okay. I'm going to save and close. It goes back to Lightroom. Okay. Let's go back to Lightroom. Okay. What would I do next? Well, just looking at it. The main thing that I see is we have a very bright background, which is good because it's leading your eye that way and all the leading lines, and everything, but the foreground is very dark. Uh, you can just hit auto and see what it does. If you don't know where to start, just hit auto and see. That's not bad. Uh, unfortunately, it, it made some areas too bright, I think down here. So let's just go to highlight, pull it back. Yeah, look, it's bringing back dimension in the sky. Look at that. You couldn't even see there was a cloud there. So this is a technique that I use a lot in travel and landscape photography is to take the highlights to minus 100. And you think it's going to trash your photo, but it doesn't. What it does is it brings back dimension in your sky, especially with clouds. And you saw a great example of it right there. Now, if it were me, and it is, I would do a couple more things. I would go get the graduated filter tool darken it so we can dark fix our sky so i'm going to drag it from the top down and fix our sky 
So let's go to about here and let's darken it a bit more. Now, another trick I do, if the sky just starts to get too dark, I'll add in some blue. I'll go to the temperature and just add in a little blue. And I think I maybe went a little bit too far there. Now, of course, the problem is that it didn't just darken the sky, but it also darkened the buildings over here and over here. And there's a number of ways using range mask to get rid of that. You could go to the color, grab the little eyedropper tool and say, let's mask, there, that just, that did it. <laughs> All right, so I just, you take the tool and you say like, let's mask out these colors and it removes those from the mask, okay? And then what I would do, so there is a, another little funky thing with the lens correction. I'm gonna go to the manual corrections down here. I don't know if it's off horizontally Let's put our thing back on here. Let's go to transform. I, I'm going to hit auto and see what it does. Yeah, that did it. Look, watch. Here's off. And then auto kind of straightened it out. It wasn't, sometimes it looks really cool to have it straightened out, but in this time it looked just a little funky. All right, now let's super cheat. I'm going to get the brush. I'm going to increase the exposure. And I'm going to make, I'm going to paint the lights on inside these street lamps to make it more interesting and let's make them a little pinkish there we go man we're cheating eric we're getting out of hand uh, over here that's uh, not it's not cheating it's not cheating oh yeah. i also might do one more thing it's still kind of dark over here what if we took the graduated filter and i hit new so it leaves the other thing in place and i drag one going this way to kind of brighten there you go and while I'm at it, let's do one over here too. Oh, but you, you got to be careful because I don't want to brighten the sky, right? That's not, it's not perfect. You know what? Let's get rid of that second one. And let's just take a brush and just brighten this area over here. Not that much. This is looking pretty good though. This is looking pretty good. Um, there is something funky down here with the, you see how the sidewalk let me just go back to Photoshop one more time. We'll wrap this one up. I'm gonna go to Photoshop. And here's what I'm gonna do. First, let's size my screen here better. There we go. I'm gonna duplicate the layer, so I'm working on a duplicate. And I'm gonna drag this end down. So, so this looks crooked, right? So like this should be straight, and I'm trying to get it crook, uh, trying to get it straighter. To where the floor doesn't, it, it needs to even go more kind of like that does that make sense are you seeing this area? oh yeah no it looks it, a lot better just and so it would so look it was kind of leaning that way yeah and i just kind of straightening it out now sometimes when you straighten it out yeah, you, you have to see me on screen here yeah you got to kind of tilt show it me? back hey, yeah, hey thank you there it is sometimes when you do this it makes the image squatty looking yeah you gotta and so stretch you can it back. go to aspect ratio and pull it back out or you could just do it right here and free transform and just pull it out a little bit so it doesn't look you lose the squattiness and i think oh, let's hit save and close and i think we're back to now we'll look at the original let me find it hold on let's look at the original which is two over and we hit let me hit reset all right so there's the original and that's the the finished product boom it might be well, it's hard for me to say. On my screen, the color looks right, but on the monitor that we have in the studio, everything is super saturated and stuff like that. So, all right, we're going to take a short break, and Sarah is going to take us to break. All right, we're going to take a short break, but stay tuned because we'll be right back. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's, That's what all we do. do. Okay. It's easy to host a group. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Williams. I'm a travel photographer from the UK and for the past few years I've been doing my photography on the side. I've got myself to a point where my photography is my full-time job now. This is the photography side hustle. It's a class exclusive to KLB1 where I'm going to teach you everything I've learned about having photography as a second job. So you can make enough money to pay for your subscriptions, pay for your memberships, pay for new gear, new lenses, everything that you want. This is the Photography Side Hustle and it's exclusive to kelby1.com. 
Have you ever gone to the movies and after spending your $30 on popcorn and a ticket, you walked out of the theater thinking, man, that movie was just an excuse to sell toys. But I have started to think that maybe I can look at those toys a different way. And I am a storyteller at heart. And the stories I want to tell are based on those cinematic universes that I love so much. So maybe I could use those toys to tell the stories that I want to tell. The only limit is my imagination. The best part is, you could do the same thing. So join me for my class on unlocking storytelling with toy photography only on Calby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Oh, we're... One of us is going to bring us in. How about you, Sarah? Hey, we're back. How about you? We're back. I'm Sarah, this is Scott, and there's Eric over there. Hey. <laughs> okay, thanks. You ready to move on to another photo? I guess you are. I, and this one's a tough one. I think the first one was easy, but uh, hey, we got a nice comment from Dan. It was his photo. He says, thank you for the tips on my photo, Scott. Well, Dan, thanks for taking such a great shot. That was fun to do that one. That was uh, uh, it makes me really miss Venice. And we got a very nice comment from Lisa yeah. B. She said, nice job, Sarah. I appreciate All right. it. All right. All right. Okay. You know what let's do, though? Come, come back on me. Because now Lisa has kind of raised the bar. So we're going to do that coming back from commercial thing again. And that way we can stay on, on, on. So, so we're, we're just go to the jib real quick and bring us back in. And, and Sarah, you rock that we're back. Then. Here we go. Okay. We're gonna, there, he, wait till he gets the jib up there. So we can get, we get there. All right. <clears throat> so uh, here we go. What's up everybody. We're back. I'm Sarah. This is Scott. There's Eric. Um, what's next? All That's right. It. Let's do Boom. it. Money. Okay. Epic. Take a look at the image on screen. This one's going to be kind of challenging. Uh, first off, I love the photo. I love, I just love the photo. It's just got such character and I like the smoke and I like the lighting. It looks like he used a grid in the back, <laughs> which of course I've always liked that on the grid. So uh, let's go and first take a look at, uh, well, it's a portrait. We can, uh, and they sent me the raw photo. Yay. We're going to go to Adobe Portrait, kind of get us in a starting place. Didn't really do much for this shot, but sometimes it does help. Uh, let's just hit auto to see where we go. All right. So why did auto make this shot so dark? Well, it's it's simply because it's, it's looking at the overall, you know, it's looking at the lights in the background and says, wow, this shot is really bright. So it, it, it overdid the exposure. Otherwise, it's not bad. It's just too dark. So I'm going to just bring the exposure back a little bit. Like maybe somewhere in there, and maybe we open up the shadows a little bit. I gotta not look at the one in the studio because the the screen we have in the studio is super contrasty. It's like double the contrast of real life. And and maybe maybe Mike. Uh, maybe, what what they probably could do is just turn the contrast could down. Turn the them. contrast down. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Mike will go over and yeah. turn the contrast down. Maybe. I don't know. It could happen. We'll see. All right. So. Um, 
I, w I bring up the, the, the uh, shadows a little bit, but his face is still a little dark. I'm going to go to the adjustment brush and just we'll paint over his, his face here. Now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look bad, as you know, but we're going to fix that. The first thing is you can see it's coming in kind of bluish. So let's, let's first off, it doesn't need to be that bright. I just need a little kicker in there. And let's warm it up by taking the, there we go. You want the, people look better warmer. Now there's a blue tone to this whole image and that could be a look the photographer was going for. So I don't wanna, don't wanna say that. But uh, uh, I would probably go now to the regular basic panel and just warm it up just a bit. Just the whole thing, because you know, it's, it's a little blue in, in areas. Now, we got to get rid of the background. There's some reflections in the sunglasses, but there's also, because he's very backlit, there is a lot of, uh, I can need to go to this brush and add some more contrast to it. It needs a, uh, where's the pen here? There it is. I need to add a little more contrast. I don't want his hair to look all funky. All right, there we go. We're getting some contrast back in there. All right, that looks good. We're gonna have to get rid of these lights in, 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 uh, Photoshop, which we, we can do. In fact, I think all the rest is Photoshop stuff. I mean, you could go here and add some, some texture and clarity to add a little grit to the photo. The texture is going to bring out detail. Clarity is going to add the grit. You might even use a hair of dehaze because it's, it, it's a tad hazy. All right. I think we're getting there. The, uh, it might be a little too colorful, but we'll deal with that in a minute. And I think I might've gone too far in brightening his face, but this is, it's a process, right? So I might just bring the exposure down just a hair. It's really, I don't like the transition where I, I, I lit his hair. Maybe I can just hold the, the minus key and just kinda, I don't like what it did to his hair right there. And maybe what I need to do instead, I'm gonna leave it like that. Let's go over, we got, we got some Photoshop work to do. So let's go over to Photoshop. You use Photoshop much there? Mm, not really. Not really. Not really. Do you edit? I just I leave that to you. Yeah. You, you edit <laughs> on your app. You do editing. You edit. No. <laughs> Nothing. No. So photos are how they come out. Yeah. Hey, I'm you just know. That good. Oh, by the way, if you recognize Sarah, and you go, she looks familiar. <laughs> Sarah has been in a number of my books. So like sometimes I just need, I need somebody and Sarah's very photogenic. Like Sarah cannot take a bad photo. So I'm like, Sarah, can you do this or do this? I need this for the book and all. And she's very kind to be able to do it for me. So if you go, she looks familiar, that's why. And I'll also show you a picture I took of Sarah when she was like four or five. It's one of my favorite pictures. And I'll, show, I'll find that on the break for you. Okay, let's get rid of this, this over here. Now, my first intent is to try to do Content aware fill, just select it, go fill, content aware, keep your fingers crossed, could be good, could be horrible. It's not bad. Yeah, it works. It's not perfect. Now we can just go back and do it again. Get you this. can clean it up. Yeah, just hit delete and bring up fill again. That's not bad. It's better than expected. But this is the easy side, it's the other side I'm worried about. All right, it's taking a little longer than expected. Here, let's get this corner. All right, that's better. Yeah, you could always clone stamp it too if you need to. Yeah, yeah, you know. I mean this, this, yeah, this, this so, is quick. This is right. quick. So here's what I would do though, is go over here and just get rid of this little mess right here. Just there, that's the patch tool. So yeah, let me just yeah. show you for those of you who aren't exactly. familiar with it. I can see kind of a line there. So I'm gonna, the patch tool is for removing bigger stuff. So you just put oh. a lasso like around it drag to a clean area nearby, let go, and it's gone. Now, this is going to be a mess yeah, up here. Yeah, this is what I'm concerned hard. about. Let's just try content aware fill because it could work. Ah. And oh, yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. That's not, not bad. bad. Come on. That's not bad. For one click, that ain't bad. All right, now, let me just real quick, I don't want to spend too much time here, but I, look, I can see <laughs> the photographer <laughs> in the glasses and the, and the reflector and all that, it's okay. So let's do this, let's do this. Let's select <coughs> the glasses, both sides. Oh gosh, that's not gonna make a very good selection. All right, I'm gonna have to do it old school. 
I'm going to go and use the pen tool, but I'm going to be really quick about it so it's not going to be a perfect selection. Don't hold it against me and say, wow, Scott, you should have done better than that. I know. I know. So let's just go here. Oh, this is going to be a little sticky. All right, here, here. Because we, we can't have that. You can't have all that in the glasses, right? And you don't notice it as a small size, but not everyone sees it as a small size. All right, let's go over here. Don't move, don't breathe, don't make a sound. It's probably time for a break, but we're gonna just rush through this. I know Sarah wants to say something. I can feel it. She wants to say, I use the pen tool all the time. All right, <laughs> here we go. So now that we've got this, I'm gonna steal a color from in here and then just fill the glasses. Now, that's a bit, that's a bit too much. Perfect, so, print it. No, Done. no, Done. no. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fill it with black on a layer and then we're going to bring back yep, some yep. of the reflections yep. and some of the highlights. So it's not, you, not so obvious. You're just kind of masking it. You're yeah. kind of like hiding it. Yeah, we're just kind of we're hiding it. Hiding it. Uh, and I probably would get rid of the logo on his shirt, though. Let's just go in here. <laughs> that logo's got to go. Because um, it's just, it's showing up so much. But shout out to the photographer. Hey, what's up? All right. <laughs> All right. So now this is looking, we're getting there. Let's... Um, so here's my question to you, Eric. Do you think the background was brown or do you think the background he's on is gray? In real life, what it was shot on? I mean, I think it's got some color to it. So you do think there was a color in the background, you don't think it was a gray and it's just got a yellow I, cast I to it? I don't think so, but it does have a yellow cast to it, but all right. I don't yeah, think it it's does. that severe. So what I, I don't think the background was that severe. All right, let's point. just go and go to white balance and let's, let's grab the white balance eyedropper and click it on that background and see if it was gray or maybe over here. Well, even if it's gray, it still has got a, like a, a warm tint. But here's yeah, what I would recommend. Yeah, definitely a warm tone to it. A couple it. of last things that I would do. So let's go in here and lower the overall vibrance to get his skin tone a little desaturated. Something maybe in there. And then lastly, let's come in with a, a, a edge and darken the edges all the way around so the focus is on him more. And then I would just, I would sharpen it to death. I would just go sharpen this thing because this guy's got great character and it's got skin and stuff. I would, I'm going to take it to Photoshop just so you can see it because you see it better in Photoshop. It's hard to see the, uh, see the uh, sharpening. So I'm going to sharpen it to death. In fact, I might duplicate the layer and sharpen it by going to the high pass filter. So it's under the filter menu, under other and choose high pass. And I'm going to crank it up to four or five somewhere in there and then change the blend mode to hard light and it's going to look at it look at the skin here now watch before and after look at the detail that brings out and everything oh yeah i would sharpen him to death because he's just got interesting skin and he's got an interesting look the last thing you might do, this is a, let me go back to Lightroom. <laughs> last thing you might do, well, I jump over to Photoshop when I need it and then I jump back, all right, is go over here to the basic panel, click on these four little squares and bring up the profile browser. And let's look at what he would look like in like black and white. Let me go to, my, one of my favorites is black and white nine. Ooh, look at that. This is a black and white. Now we can bring up some more detail in the shadows, maybe a little more clarity, and Bob's your uncle. That's it, that's where I would go. I think it's a black and white. That answers our color question. Um, his hand is a little bright, don't you think, Eric? Yeah, I mean, definitely brighter than the face. It just could tone down. Well, let's just tone it's it. Like, and it's, 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 it's like, yeah, right across the center there and his thumb it's right too. in there. Yeah. We just kind of, and the thumb's like uh, on fire. Yeah, the thumb's, thumb's on fire. Thumb's on fire. Whoops, I just moved the whole thing. All right. Yeah, but anyway, a, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with where that went. All right. Well, it's time to take a break. <laughs> Sarah, take us out. All right. We're going to take another short break, but we will be right back. So stay on. <laughs> Did you? Hey, everybody. Eric Kuna here, and I'm here with my new class. It's called Telephoto Astrophotography for Beginners. What we're focused in in this class is those narrow field, deep space astrophotography shots. And as you can see, we're here in light polluted Tampa, Florida, 
and we still can capture stunning, amazing images. So anybody can do this, especially if it's something where you just, you have a camera, you have a telephoto lens, you have a tripod. We're gonna show you in this class the little things that you need to add to start making shots like this. So join me in my new class on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. hey -o, we're back. I'm here. Sarah's here. I am. And Kuhn is here. Rocket hey, man. Hey. <laughs> um, so Sarah was just telling me a story on the break, and I'd forgotten about it, but unfortunately brought back some, some horrible memories. Uh, so a, a couple years ago, uh, I brought the kids to Photoshop World. Huge mistake, <laughs> huge no-no, but uh, tell them the story you were just okay, telling me on so, the break. I remember it when, um, when you told me. When we were on, when, when I went to Photoshop World, it was, in, it was in state, we were in Orlando, and I would go to, I would, I would split up from my Uncle Scott and Aunt Calibra, and every time I would run into him, I would just, I would whip out my phone and I'd sprint over and I'd just be like, oh my God, is that Scott Kelby? <laughs> oh my God, I need to get a photo. Can I please get a photo with you? <laughs> Please. So she has all these awkward <laughs> selfies of me looking like this. Like, really? No. Really? <laughs> but you're getting a little insight in my world, so there's that. Speaking of world, let's... Uh, oh, wait, wait, Speaking wait. We're world. about to turn it over to Mr. Cooney to do the Milky Way, but I got an important announcement. So the, you know, people have been waiting to hear what we're doing with this year's Worldwide oh, yeah. Photo Walk. What we are going to do is we're going to... We're just going to postpone it until the spring. I think we have a really good opportunity by like next March or April to be able to actually walk together. Can't do it right now. It just doesn't make any sense. But I think we're going to get to the point that by next spring, we'll be all be able to get together and walk in groups. Now, we've got some things planned for the orphanage, some things that we're going to do to raise money now because they, they, they need money. So we're, we're going to do that. So we're not leaving the orphanage behind. We're just moving the walk to where I think we will we'll all be together again. And that's, so that's what our thinking is here is that by, by March or April, we're going to be in a whole different place that, which, which is what we, I, I know we all hope for, but we really want to get back to being able to be together because so much of the photo walk is the community aspect of it mm -hmm. and being together. Yeah. There's really two parts. It has a social mission, which is raising money for the orphanage. We're still going to raise money for the orphanage, but we might get an opportunity if we do this right to raise money now in October and raise then a whole bunch more in April. So the 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 um, orphanage has a double win. We will all have a double win if we get to walk together in April. So that's where we're at. Uh, we we struggled with it and we went back and forth and and what we wanted to do. And I think it's it's the best solution. It's not the ideal solution because this is not an ideal time, but it's what we're going to go with. And thank you for, for understanding. Thank you for everybody who has, has shouted out and sent us texts and emails and, and uh, that, mm -hmm. that, that are as disappointed as we are, but understand. And so that we, we really do appreciate that. So thank yeah, you very I much. I can't wait for that to happen too. Yeah. And I, I was just, just today uh, talking to a couple of people that like that I've met on photo walks, like, you know, like oh, that's yeah. where you met them, you know? So. Oh, I have friends, yeah. absolutely, that I've made from... In other countries. In other countries, yeah. yeah. 
So, right. Well, Dave Williams. Look at Dave yeah. Williams. Right. Dave Williams Weiss is a good buddy of mine. I've I've gone yeah. on trips with Dave, and and we've done all this stuff, and we became friends on a photo walk in London. Yeah. Right. And Peter Treadway, go. and like you know, mm -hmm. guys that are like really important friends of mine, literally met on the photo walk. Yeah. It also gives me an excuse to go to another country every year. <laughs> So, and, and the last one I went was Chicago. That's another country, right? It was an interesting photo walk. It was great. Yeah, Eric, great. We, had a, we had a great time. Yeah, had, I love it. We had all kinds of fun. Okay, uh, Mr. Kuna, take it away. So, yeah, so we're going to look at a Milky Way shot. So, that I, oh, you know, wait, what, what can I, Eric, what can I add on. to it? Hold on. <laughs> I got to read this comment. It's Sarah's mom. Thanks, yes. Mom. My my sister in law, who I think of just as my sister, she's awesome. <laughs> she she she's the greatest. She says, "Awesome job, Sarah. You're on the grid with Scott Kelly." I am. Isn't that crazy? Thanks, you guys Mom. need a selfie together. You guys need to, you need to do a selfie. Oh, we'll, we'll yeah, definitely. Yeah. We already did a selfie. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We did there an Instagram go. story too, which was really cool. bad. All right. Okay, Mr. K. Sorry. Take it away. So, uh, yeah. So uh, we're talking. Uh, somebody submitted this uh, Milky Way shot to be edited. Um, I can tell that it's already somewhat either either it's a composite of two shots or it, it's something like that because when you go into the metadata, it's ISO 100. So. This is obviously is either composite or something like that, but it's a JPEG, so we can we can only go so far with it. If we had the raw, I could probably go a little farther. But you know, just messing around with it for a few minutes, we can go from there to there, and I think that's Ooh. that's the shot that you want is something like that. How do we get so? There? How do we get there? So first thing first that I would say for everybody with Milky Way is we're going to be shooting at a higher ISO, and that's another reason why I could tell the sky. If I look at the sky, so. I'm going to be using uh, on one no noise here. So if you look at it, like the sky, you know, uh, had some noise in it. So I ran it. I did it already. Took it into Photoshop. So I have in here. So let's go ahead and zoom in like there. So that's the shot with the noise. And then once you run no noise and apply that, you're going to get that almost like it just wipes out the noise wow. in the sky, right? So it's just like you're taking, and you can see like the building wasn't that noisy, but then it still wiped out the noise in the building and added a little pre-sharpening. It also does um, some demosaicing, all that stuff. So we did that, right? So all I did is go into no noise, hit adjust, hit export, and then it came back into hey, Photoshop. Somebody's gonna win that plugin today, right? What's that? Aren't we giving away the? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, giving away that plugin win that. today. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a great plugin. What I do love about it is the speed. I, I will say you just need some kind of noise reduction with Milky Way shots. There are other products out there, but what I will say is, and I got a bit of test, I've only been using no noise for a week, but I will say it is much quicker than all the other alternatives oh, that yeah. I've used, right? So it is much quicker. Um, so that's, that's an advantage there. You know, like you can really like get quick and go do stuff. Now there's other ones out there. So if you have another one, just run that noise reduction, get that noise reduction. So uh, so we're down to that. So we've gone from uh, that noise to now here. So now what we have to do is deal with, there's some color and some contrast problems. So like one, it's, it's, too, uh, it's too almost, uh, mil uh, it's got like a murky kind of greenish yellow kind of, the Milky Way should not be looking green and the building should not be looking green or yellow. There is some air glow, so we're going to deal with that. So what we do is just do some color and contrast um, uh, fixing. So we're going to go from there to like there. And the way I would do that is just going in, you could just go into your camera raw filter. And all we're going to do is make some adjustments. So one, we're just going to grab our white balance. And this is like the most important thing with the Milky Way. People do not understand it. Like they'll, getting your white balance correct once you get that correct, you'll kind of have everything else in check. So you can see if I boost the vibrance and saturation, I'm kind of cheating here. You see how it really brought out that that yellowy or that that, that yellowy green kind of yeah. tinge to it. So then we can just start dialing this in, right? And we're kind of pulling this back, and then we're kind of pulling this up to like there. And then if we bring these sliders back, we'll see that that kind of took out that tinge. So you can see how you go from something like that to like cleaning it up. Oh yeah, and then, I did clean it up. Nicely. Then you just add that color and, and contrast. The way we do that is again, going into like camera raw filter. And this is where you, you're, you'd be like, well, I usually don't touch the clarity slider. 
Well, with Milky Way shots, touching that clarity slider really helps to kind of bring out that detail in the Milky Way. What you're actually going to do is pull the texture slider back, and then we're going to pull this dehaze slider up. And you can see how that really kind of cuts through it. Now, the other thing with this shot well, that, is... That dehaze is a secret weapon in Milky Ways, isn't it? It is. And, and here's the other one is, this shot, I would say I'd want another half a stop of exposure. It was a little too dark, so bring it again up about half a stop. So somewhere in there. Yeah, you have to be able to see that foreground. Yeah, image. you got to just see it, but you don't want it blown away, like blown right. up. Yeah, you just want it to be kind of gentle. Well, because the, the shot is a Milky Way It's a way dark shot. shot, right? So but if you, your foreground is like blasted with light, it's Yeah, then, then it's changing kinda, what the focus of the shot But you just is. want a little bit of light in. So again, we've gone from there to there. Then all I'm gonna do is enhance the Milky Way uh, via a layer. So that's where I'm just affecting the Milky Way. And the way I'm doing that is a layer mask. So if I option click on that, you can see where I've just kind of like masked in just the kind of the highlight areas or the, the the big areas, right? And wait, 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 whoa, whoa, beep. Yep, beep. yep. What did you do to enhance it? Oh, okay. So what I'm doing there is I've got like a preset with a bunch of stuff that I'm oh, doing to it. Oh, you lame-o. But here's the thing. All it's doing is just doing vibrancy, uh, color, curves, all that stuff, all that levels. And that's all you're doing to it is just to enhance it. Oh, okay. That's easy. It, it is. It is. <laughs> it, it, it is when you get down to it. I mean, here's what I'll tell you is like, there's a secret weapon to all this and that is, that is actions or presets. Oh yeah. I used to do a lot of this stuff manually, press right? A button. But I press a button. So I have this thing called the pro panel. So check this out. So I got the, the pro panel here and it's got all these, it's basically just an action set, right? But over here in the effects, they have uh, Milky Way. So all you're doing is just clicking on that enhanced Milky Way. Uh, it's so, running. Whoa, whoa. So uh, they, they have an astrophotography section? Yes. yes. Oh, that's yeah, this nice. Yeah, it's like 40 bucks. And what it was is when I found this years ago, it was yeah. the same stuff I do in Photoshop just with one click. So yeah. you can still go and adjust it. So let me show you how you do it. So say you're in here, you hit Enhance Milky Way. It's going to run that action. So it's running that action in the background. And then now it's going to build me a layer mask. Now, because of this photo, so let's go ahead and, and click on it. You can see if I option click on it, that's what it picked up as the Milky Way. But right. then because it's a layer mask, I can now edit it, right? Right. So what I'll do is I'll just go over here with my paintbrush. I'll change my blend mode to overlay because I only want to really affect the, I want to make the light parts lighter and I don't want to affect the dark parts. So if I do that and then go paint over here, I'm just enhancing those light parts that it found, right? right? I gotta get that. Oh, it's, it's a really cool plugin. It's just actions um, and great. I've been using it for years. So then what you do is- hey, and You tell me now? You've yeah. been using it for years secretly <laughs> so, behind my back? So you see how it like really makes the, the Milky Way pop, right? You see how like that really makes the Milky Way pop. So that's what we want to do. We want the Milky Way to be the star of the, the photo. We don't want it to be like kind of like the secondary thing of the photo. So we really want to make it pop. So the next thing we want to do to make the Milky Way pop is actually take stars away. We actually want to reduce the amount of stars in the sky. So you can see by if I turn that on and off, it kind of just took a lot of those stars away from the photo. And again, to do that, all I'm doing is running a star reduction right there, reduce stars. It's doing the same thing that I would do in that taking away the, the stars. Then we're gonna add star glow. This is kind of a, a finishing move. We're starting to get the finishing move. So I add a star glow. You can see where up here on the, on the screen, if I turn on and off, so there's the stars as they were. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bigger stars. I'm gonna make them kind of glow. It's just very subtle in there. But the way we do that is if we zoom into like one of these stars that, ha that we're gonna add the glow to, if we just take and go to that layer mask, grab a white brush, turn it on normal, and maybe I, t I take the opacity to 10%, right? And then if we just click on that star and then reduce and click on that star and reduce and click on that star, you can see how it made that star kind of glow. You see that, it's very subtle. And that's all we're doing to it, is just making that, these stars kind of glow and kind of have that glow to it. And that way, when you pull back and you see it, 
as an image, you've got this star glow. And then that might be a little too much for me. All you got to do is pull down that opacity, maybe somewhere in there, and then we've got a star glow. Then all we're going to do is do um, some dodging and burning. I add an Orton effect. That's what I do to my photos. And then... Oh, you want to tell me what an Orton effect <laughs> is there, bro? <laughs> so, I mean, it's a, I could take, I take forever, right? I don't want to take too long, but uh, I really like it. It's, it creates like this soft glow of yeah. the photo um, it, and kind of just diffuses it. So it's not so, it sharpens certain areas, but then softens other areas. Creates kind of this, I call it a dreamy look. It kind of has a dreamy look to it, right? And that's all the Orton effect is. So again, we go from here. So that's what we started with. And then this is a JPEG. I could have pushed it farther to there. Now so. you have classes on Kelby One on doing all the Smoky Way stuff. Yes, actually, we're just about to film a class on the advanced stuff, like I just did, like Ooh, like nice. where we really get into like this is just what I do to every photo. There's like things that you do to every Milky Way photo, and that's what it is with the Milky Way. It's almost rinse repeat when you get down to it, because the lighting is very similar. You got to think if you're going out to a dark spot, your settings are very similar, the lighting's very similar. Yeah. It's more about all the other stuff in the post. All right. There you go. Well, we are well into break time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we come back, I have a photo to show you that I told you I would look up, and which I did. And we will uh, be back in just a second. Don't go away. Such and such, blah, blah. Sarah's here. That's her. That's her. Hello, I'm Leonard Johnson, and I'm very excited to be here doing my first class at Kelby One. Now I'm going to teach you how to take your images from start to finish with lights, beauty dishes, V-flats, tether to a computer with Capture One, Capture Palette so my makeup artist can follow through. So creating beauty portraits, fashion images. I enjoy doing beauty photography because I like being around people. I think I'm different from other photographers because of the way I shoot. I work with a mood board and I follow that mood board from start to finish to create whatever look I'm going for. And I'm working closely with my team. So creating a team is the way to go if you want to elevate those images. And that's the way I do it to separate me from the crowd. So in this class, I'm gonna take you through how to create impactful images from start to finish. So come join me in my latest class at calibre1.com. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color accurate lights in the industry. Due to the lights compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, oh, we are back. Scott's here. Our guest in the studio is Sarah Christ. Mr. Kuna is here, as always, just being Mr. Kuna. Just Milky <laughs> Way in that. Yeah. Milky yeah. Way in his thing. All right, I dug up that, that picture I took of Sarah in 2005. So Sarah was one? No. No. <laughs> no. I think I was, it was definitely four, probably 2008. Yeah, yeah, maybe like that. Anyway, anyway, this is such a sweet photo. <laughs> I just, I, I remember getting it and thinking, wow, because it's just, she was a very shy little girl. Now, she's a little shy on the show today. In real life, <laughs> she is not shy. Not at all. So, uh, but uh, anyway, there yeah, there, there you go. I like, hey, do you notice he did the slow fade? Yeah, between the, I saw that. Uh, there's nice, a cross yeah, dissolve. That's Jason, a little cross they got the dissolve. Cross dissolve. Yeah, She's like, here's yeah. new Sarah, yeah. and then like, you know. Look at that. That was very wow. nicely done, Jason. Nice touch. Nice touch. Wow. Can you look down like you're sad, though? Yeah. All right, now we can do it here. 
now. Oh, he doesn't do it. <laughs> now, now he, he now doesn't, doesn't do it. She's looking down, <laughs> sad and everything, and didn't, yeah, okay. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> there it is. Perfect. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, and since it's that kind of day, Dan, Dan, who we did his, his, his uh, a photo earlier sent in a joke which is perfectly appropriate on the grid by the way why did the camera stop dreaming of a career in photography he couldn't remain focused mm -hmm. it's okay dan it's a dad joke i appreciate those because you know. hey you know while we're on the break i was talking to christina over here we we're talking about this milky way shot the one thing i didn't talk about is the base photo here was was actually it was a really good photo to start with uh, most oh, Milky yeah. Way shots are either way underexposed or way overexposed. This person, like I said, I would I only think they're half a stop different from where I would be. So oh, it's a good. good starting point. It's just that's where that's why. And if you don't have a good starting point, you can't build up from there. All right, so. let's roll. We got uh, here's a shot, and we only got a couple of minutes, so we don't have much more time. But. Uh, uh, oh, looks yeah. like the Blue Angels, like the number blues. five and number six. Uh, let's go first and hit this uh, lens correction stuff, because uh, look at the corners. Look how dark they were. Look, look. Yeah. Just now, it did find that it's a Sony. Uh, used a 200 to 600, a good lens for this kind of thing, and that that right there just kind of helped a lot. Number two is, I, I know I now I I went for most of my career saying never hit the auto button. Because it used to be the overexposed, but oh, now it kind no, of gave no, you a no, starting not place. Anymore. Oh, it's a little, 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 it's, little. It's not awesome. No, it's, it's just awesome. a starting place. It's, it's not good. the end. That wasn't um, the best one. All right, I'm so I'm going to crop it in, though, because really, what is this shot about? Is it about all the empty space? No. Let's get the jets. And But we want to leave. You got to yeah, leave just gotta have space. Yeah, got a little bit of breathing room over there. leave space up there. All right, now um, you have a lot of shadows, so it's backlit, right? You can see the sun is up here; it's backlit a bit. So I might open up the shadows a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be careful because you can make it look washed out. So you yeah. got to be careful not to add too much. Um, you can definitely add texture and clarity. Clarity is going to make metal look shiny, so clarity Which is nice. A nice great play on here. Jet. Yeah, it works great on jets. It's really, Especially really good. Painted ones. Yeah. Um, you don't. Your sky isn't exactly blue. It's kind of overcast gray haze. With a, yeah, yeah, with a hint of blue. So there's a couple of different strategies you could do. You could add more blue to the photo, and it and it won't mess up the jets too much. So that's just taking the temperature over a little to the left. Uh, you can increase the vibrance, which will also help the sky a little, but. What should we really do, Eric? I would Let's... Add, add gradient. No. Or, or no. do a sky replacement. We're going to do a sky replacement. We're going replacement. over to Photoshop. Like, We're going to go to re sky replacement right here under the edit menu. Yeah, we're going all in. We're going all in. We'll just use some of the, the stock Adobe don't, stuff Don't here. use that one. Though. No, no. I, that was just whatever. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a good one. This one's going to be fakey looking. That's no, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. No. Well, you can also scale those up, move those. Around oh yeah, you can and... scale them, and I'm just clicking on them just to see where we're at. Wow, that's kind of a nice sky. It's just not bright enough. But you could adjust. So that. yeah, you could go over here and just brighten that sky. Let's just go and go to levels and <coughs> bright. Let's actually hit the slider, brighten it up a bit. Okay, none of these are really the right sky, but any of them are better than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the other thing you got to, like, when you're at the shows, like, if you have a good day of skies, take the same lens you're using and shoot skies. I do that all the time. Okay, so here's yeah. the thing that I've been doing, Eric. I'm lowering yeah. the opacity of the sky yeah, replacement. Yeah, yeah, to kind of mute it. Yeah, to kind of mute it so it's not so in your face. Correct. And I think that, yeah. that certainly looks Love a whole that. lot better. And then at the very end, of course, you're going to, uh, let's, well, I'm sorry, hold on, let's flatten the image, and then I'm going to sharpen it to death. Uh, we could do the high pass sharpening, other high pass, and that might be a bit much. You're just trying to look for an outline around all the edges, and then switch two. to either Three go to seven. hard light for maximum sharpening, or soft light if you don't need quite that much. And yeah, you can see, look. You I mean, can they got, actually they, read. they got good uh good 
focus, good setting. Yeah, no, yeah, good shot. It's good a shot. It just needed a little. It's a, you know, it's about editing. And that, that sky is what really makes it. Yeah, yeah, the sky did make a make a big difference. So that that would be a, a pretty easy one. Okay, uh, we it, we, uh, we got some winners. Uh, of the prizes. Do you want to do the prizes or do you want me to do them? I can do the prizes. All right, do the prizes. All right, so Don Bromberg on one software. Yeah, he got the plugin, so he got yeah, the AI on noise. One, no, Congratulations, on noise, Don. AI. Right. Yeah, it's great. And Jay Doll got the Lightroom book. This one? Right the one here? By, the one by Scott Kelby? What? From the I grid? love that guy. And Photoshop that, World? That's Scott Kelby? What? Oh my God. I could listen to that guy all flipping day. In fact, I do. Wow. All right. Who else we got? Okay, who so. won the Platypod accessory? Hey, by the way, this accessory kit is better than you think it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. This accessory kit has got all kinds of stuff. It has a case. It's got a long strap so you can strap your Platypod onto stuff. It's got a spigot for a flash. It's got all kinds of... It's a whole bunch of stuff. You can go find it. It's the multi-accessory. It's not just the accessory kit, Eric. It's the multi. Multi. All Who right. won that one? Graham Pace. Woo! And Dan... The one who did the first photo, the one yeah. who said this a wonderful pun joke, mm -hmm. dad joke moment. Um, he'll take has either won the platypod yeah. accessories. Well, no, he'll say no. he'll take the platypod no. or the Nick. Or the Nick. He's winning the Nick. You're winning, winning the, the Nick, Nick because somebody already won the platypod accessory. But congratulations, Dan, and thanks for for sharing your photo with us today and your your awesome joke. So what you need to do is email us at gridprize at kelby1.com. We'll verify that you're you and your information. We'll get you the stuff right away. So there you go. All right, let's do one more. We're going to wrap up the show. Let's just grab one more. Let's get a big shoe. Let's, uh, let me see what we got here. Let me find. Uh, we haven't done any portraits yet. Let's do this one. Oh, we did a portrait, actually. All right, well, we're going to do this one anyway. So... It's it's a it's it's lit well. It's a good shot. Uh, it's just editing, right? So the only thing that I would probably do is number one, we got to crop it in, right? So let's just start with that, kind of get us at least in the right space. Uh, maybe so good photography that always helps. All right. Second shot yeah, is that helps a lot. I gotta think. We got to get rid of that shadow. I I think they now, like this. I think that they're I wanting wonder. To, I know. I wonder. I wonder. But, but if it's, it's called it, how I would edit your photo, I, know, I would get rid of that a, shadow. Well, you probably would have moved them up a couple of feet and not had the shadow. That's what it is. You want that shadow falling on the floor. The problem is that they're, they're so close to the it's background. Like, they're like a, yeah, it's a psych wall. You they're like a it. foot from the background. She needs to be eight or ten feet from the background. Yes. If it were me, I'd get rid of that shadow. Now, if you want a hard shadow, we can do that too. But I don't think that's really the hard shadow that we're going for. Yeah. So let's do this. Um, let, let's hit auto and see where we, we are. That's not bad, actually. Uh, I would desaturate the skin a little bit. It saturated the skin. It went to plus 10. And generally for portraits, the look these days is not the actual real. Because yeah. our, our skin's usually very yellow. You want it to be some yellow. You don't want it to be blue. But it's a desaturated look. So I'd probably yeah, it's take it. a more subdued. And yeah, just pull yeah. it off a little bit. Like it's a minus 8. So something like that. A little bit of off there. Um Pants are okay, shoes are okay, lighting's okay. It's a tad bright, so I might bring the highlights back just a hair. And I think that's a little better. Then, the rest is in Photoshop. Let's jump over there. Ka-chow. All right, now, I would go straight to the quick select tool because that makes the button up here called select subject available. I'm gonna click select subject. And it selects her, and we're going to put her on our own background. So we're going to press Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows. And now it's just her isolated on her own. And it did a pretty good job in her hair and everything. Yeah. Now, you could go in and work the hair a little bit and get it perfect, but that's, this is close enough. So now comes the question of what do we do with that background. I think what I would probably do, and this is, I'm just, I'm spitballing here. I would add a new blank layer below her, and I think I would get the eyedropper tool. Mm -hmm. I would sample this color yeah. for the roof, and then I would switch my to my background color and sample this one, and then I would drag a gradient back there to cover that what was there. Let's drag a gradient. 
I don't like that. Oh, the, my grays seem to be almost the same gray. Yeah, they're like identical. <laughs> so let's try this. Let's choose this gray to the other gray. But that that does a better job. Yeah, that's a little better. But we're losing the floor. However, <laughs> we can do this. Let's let's, and we're losing the shadows that you do want. So let's lower the opacity so I can see the original behind it. So the oh, and we can just hide this. So you can see the original. Let's. What if we? And, and this is this may not work worth a crap. But let's try. Let's get the brush. Where's the brush? Let's paint him. Let's add a layer mask and paint him black. And let's try to bring the floor back. Oh, I need a soft edge brush. I got a hard edge brush. Sorry. All right. It helps if you make those sounds, Sarah. It's a very well known. All right. Let's just see when I bring this back up and bring her there. Yeah, it needs a little yeah. massaging, but you see how I'm trying to bring back the original? I, it's just I don't like those extra shadows there. I like the shadows under her shoes. So what if I switch to white and brought, got rid of that? Look at that. Woo. What? No. No. Yes. No. Yes. Wow. Come on. Give it to Amazing. me. Amazing. <laughs> that is, that is, that looks really good. Well, come on. It works pretty well. That works really well. We got a nice cleaner background. That's what it is sometimes. It's just experimenting and like, you, you're like, oh yeah, that worked. All right. Now let's go. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this again. It's maybe trash. Add a new layer. I'm going to paint with a big white brush. Because the light is obviously coming from this side. What if I brighten that just a little bit? Now that's more than a little bit. Let me just brighten it a little over there. So our graduated. So you can see the lights yeah. more on this side. Uh, there are some retouching things that we could do. Like I can see some hot spots on our forehead. Let, hold on. Let me just flatten this just for fun. There's some sp uh, hot spots on our forehead. Like right here in those hot spots. What you could do is this. Go to the spot healing brush, not the spot, the regular healing brush. Make your brush small. Let's, let's get rid of that stuff. Option over here and we'll get rid of the hot spots all together. Completely gone. Oh, I smeared her. her uh, sorry, that was a, oh, I did it again. Ugh. You got to be careful when you get close to stuff. Okay, we, we get rid of it all, right? This so is her why hot... usually you're not using a trackpad when you do this. Right. So... <laughs> Once you do that and it's completely gone, unfortunately, you've lost the highlights too. So you would go to fade healing brush. This is undo on a slider and you bring back the highlights a little but without it looking sweaty. So maybe somewhere in there. So you do have the look without the sweaty look. Boom. Our eyes look good. Hair looks good. Uh, you could do some, some skin softening and we've got this shadow cutting across there. That's going to be a drag to work on which you're probably going to have to clone. Um, or maybe you could take this arm. No, no, it's shadowy over here. Boy, this is, this is going to be the hardest part, Eric, yeah, right that, here. That, that's a difficult one. Yeah, because you could do it over time, and it's just it would just take some time. But you're going to have to basically take this part of the arm and just kind of slowly. Like work it in. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Build it. I mean, it can be done. Yeah, you, it can I mean, be done. I mean, it would be worth doing. But you don't want that shadow coming across her arm. And so you're just going to have to take your time and do all. Okay, you get the idea. Don't do better than I did. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. Don't like and you it. might just do some overall skin softening. Um, so there's all kinds of plugins that you can use uh, that can do skin softening. Uh, that actually might work well. Uh, Frank Dorhoff uses... Portrait Pro, which works Portrait, well. Yeah. And there, you could do a little, but only do the skin softening on her arms. Her face looks okay. It's overall actually, you know, pretty good. So, yeah, I think it was a good image. It's, it's not bad. I mean, but I, you I, would have stepped, you would have just had her step out and lit it. I would have her move 10 feet dig, forward dig, so that you don't shadows, get that shadow. Yeah. 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 That's about it. Otherwise, though, well done. Okay. Uh, we're out of time. We're actually 11 minutes and 16 seconds over. But uh, I want to thank our special in-studio guest, the awesome Sarah Christ. <laughs> thank you for being here. You did an awesome job. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. And you want to give any shout outs or anything? Just to anybody? This is your shout out, Ton. Me? I'll let you think about it while I, I talk to Eric. <laughs> anybody want to shout out? You can shout out your mom. You can shout out my wife, <laughs> friends, family, K-pop, 
uh, high school members, musical. members of Seventeen, members of Stray Kids, members I mean, of Shiny. Seventeen. Okay. I mean, I'm really happy I could be on the grid today. Honestly, I want to say, you know, Jordan, you can no longer hold this over my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mom. I couldn't have gotten here without you. Next to Scott Kelby, like. I mean, it's just this amazing, uh, amazing experience. <laughs> I know. I know. I live uh, it every day. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. K? Yeah, thanks. Go follow Eric on, yeah. on Instagram. You want to, if you like the rocket shots, which I know you do, go yeah. follow him. Eric Kuna. Eric Kuna on Instagram and uh, Twitter. And on Twitter. All right, guys. Nope. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to my crew here for doing a great job. And we will see you guys next wednesday i think we even know what we're doing next wednesday i'm not saying yeah but it's very awkward we, we have the do. next two weeks we planned. do like the next two weeks plan that's which, not like us whoa all right we gotta wait i don't even know what i'm gonna do bye everybody cheers take care <laughs>